grab our yellow loop. And the yellow loop is going to go around the elbows. So on the forearm side of your elbows, like so. Now you can make this harder by bringing it around your wrists, but let's start with it around the elbows because it's pretty hard all on its own. Now this is something that you can do at the wall as well. Many of you might have already done this. It's a serratus slide. If we're doing it at the wall, we're thinking about pressing into the wall with the edges of our hands. I'm gonna turn so you can see my profile. I'm sitting up tall, my ribs are in. My hands are gonna stay parallel the whole time and everything is shoulder width apart. I'm gonna think about a little bit of that protraction. So I'm pressing my elbows forward. And then I'm gonna reach my arms up, trying to keep my hands parallel and imagining my arms being parallel to the wall. I'm going to go as high as I can, feeling the work here, not feeling the work here. So if it starts to go into my neck, stop. You can try to reconnect into your armpit. So I think about pushing my arms up from under my arm. So this is doing the work of pressing my arm up. You can also widen your arms while you do this. So instead of staying parallel, you could go slightly into a Y. So those are kind of your two fixes, but if you can't get it out of this spot, then you have reached your highest point. So either reconnect into the armpit, let your arms go wider, but keep it out of the neck. When you come back down, I want you to think about reaching your elbows forward again. So my elbows reach and that's what starts pulling my arms back down to my sides. Now ribs staying still here, again, really important. We're trying to move our arms around our rib cage rather than needing our ribs to help us lift our arms. So there's a sense of resistance through your abdominals pulling your ribs in the opposite direction that your hands are reaching. And again, exhaling as they go up, inhaling them down. Let's do two more. Last one. All right, so we're gonna put that to the side. We're gonna come back to it in a minute. We're gonna lay down on our belly. We're gonna do, um, I call this diamond arms. Well, whatever. This is exercise is focusing on activating your low trapezius. So your trapezius is the big diamond shaped muscle on your back. It goes from the base of your skull to the base of your rib cage and from uh, the shoulder to shoulder. So trapezius also super important for this upward rotation that we need um, when our arms are over our head. So I'm going to start with my arms like so. So my elbows are slightly higher than my shoulders and my fingertips are pointing towards each other over my head. My elbows are bent to about 90 degrees. You want a position where your elbow can stay the same amount of bent and your hands would eventually end up touching each other, making that diamond shape. But we're gonna start with them a little bit wider. So here, you're thinking about just a little connection through your core. Your shoulders are relaxed and you're going to start by just sliding your shoulder blades down your back, reaching towards your back pockets, maybe a tiny bit of pulling them together, but it's mostly a downward slide. And then we're going to connect that downward slide 
to the lifting of our arms. So my elbows aren't lifting. I'm just lifting my hands up and bringing them back down. Start sliding the shoulders and then let the lifting of the arms continue the motion of the shoulder blades. So you don't wanna jam your shoulder blades all the way down and then lift your arms. You're just kind of letting the shoulder blades start and then letting the arms continue that motion. So hopefully what you're feeling here is quite a bit of work between your shoulder blades and maybe some work in your armpit as well. So getting some of that serratus anterior again. If you're feeling it in the neck, then you need to think more about that shoulder blade slide and play around with how high you lift your hands. Maybe you're not lifting them very high. Now, if this feels good, if you're connecting to this movement, then you're gonna bring your hands up so your fingertips are touching. And you're gonna keep doing the same thing. Slide the shoulder blades, Lift the arms. Now, if that's feeling good and you want to try the hardest way, the hardest way is going to be with your elbows straight and your arms in a Y. Thumbs are still up towards the ceiling. And then we're doing that same slide the shoulder blades. But now when I go to lift my arms, I'm thinking about trying to reach my fingertips towards the wall and press my thumbs towards the ceiling. This can be a really small movement. It's gonna be much harder to keep this out of your neck if you have that spot right here that really wants to grip. So you, if you have that spot, I would stick with bent elbows. However, if you can do this without that spot getting grippy, then you totally should. So there is a sense of opposition for this movement as well, right? Down in my back, I'm thinking about pulling down, but in my arms, I'm thinking about reaching out and up. So again, parts of my body trying to move in opposite directions that are then keeping me balanced and stable. So try a couple more wherever it felt good for your body. And then we're gonna sit back up. So we are doing this in a specific order. And the order is working on your scapular stabilizers first and then working on strengthening your external rotators, right? Our external rotators connect from our scapula to the head of our shoulder. So in order to strengthen them, our scapula need to be able to be still and stable, right? We need to be able to hold the scapula stable against the rotation of the arm. So that means turning all your scapular stabilizers on before you work on external rotation. So everything that we just did, was focused on scapular stabilization. And now we're gonna work on external rotation. So I'm gonna sit like so. So I have one leg relaxed, it can be straight, it can be bent, whatever, this leg doesn't matter, whatever's comfortable. This knee is bent up. I'm taking my ball again, but just to give me something to hold on to. You could also do this with a very light weight, uh, no more than three pounds or a water bottle. You could also just make a fist and clench it really hard. And we're gonna put the elbow on the knee and I'm gonna let my arm come down. Now, before I start moving, I'm gonna think about a little bit of retraction. So I'm not trying to jam my shoulder blade way back to my spine. I'm just thinking about gently pulling it back and feeling it be really firmly connected to my rib cage where I can hold it still. And then gripping that ball hard, so I'm creating tension and resistance, I'm gonna lift my arm up only as far as I can keep my scapula still and my body from twisting, and then bring it back down. As I bring it down, I'm not letting my shoulder relax and roll forward. Now, sometimes when we do external rotation, we wanna do that and pop the ribs out. 
also not helpful. So keep your ribs still. We're trying to just isolate the movement of the humerus in the socket of the shoulder. So places that would be super great to feel fatigued when you're doing this, and I find with this, I'll do like six and I'll be like, oh yeah, this is super easy. I'm not feeling it at all. And I get to like the seventh and all of a sudden it's like impossible to lift my hand. Um, feeling fatigue right through here, through the top of the shoulder, that's great. Feeling fatigue on the shoulder blade, also good. Those would be the main places that we want to be feeling it. We're going to do three more. So doing sets of like 10 to 15, especially if you're just doing an exercise like this without including any other external rotation exercises. But I'm bad at counting, so I just do some until I feel tired. And then we're going to switch sides. So starting with Setting the scapula on your back, ribs are in, grip the ball, and rotate. If you have uh, Applied Anatomy of Aerial Arts by Dr. Emily Sherb, um, she has a bunch of exercises like this and talks a little bit more about uh, like mechanically what's going on. Uh, I highly recommend it. She's great. And if you like knowing about how your body works, especially when it's doing stuff in the air, that's what that book is all about. But she has a whole section on self-care as well. Let's do two more here. All right. So I'm going to hold it. So I just have it in my hands. My arms are straight and slightly in front of me. Because then I'm going to turn my arms and I want to feel my upper arm turn from being slightly in front of my body to being more at my side. So this is really focusing on turning the humerus in the socket. There's that same external rotation again. Without letting the ribs pop out, right? So everything's staying still and my upper arm is turning in the body. So same thing with this one, we're going to start moving our arms. Trying to maintain that same motion in the humerus with our arms in different positions. And you'll notice that the higher up your arms go, the harder it gets. Now, as our arms go above shoulder height, we want to feel that upward rotation of the scapula. So we're not trying to jam our shoulders down and back. We're just trying to keep this little bit of space at the base of our neck. Our shoulders can go up as our hands go up. If you're working on your handstands, working on it up in this range, trying to get directly overhead is great. Make sure your ribs are staying in, Whew. and we'll go back down. Try to keep your hands shoulder width apart. And face the anchor so that my arms can be fully extended with a little bit of tension. So here, we're thinking about being in our good upright posture, so some connection through the abdominals, a little bit of weight on your heels. 
And these next two exercises are about integration, right? So we did a bunch of isolating things to like strengthen and prime the parts. And now we're going to do a couple of things that are about how everything is moving together. So I'm going to hold on to the loops, standing up tall. And I'm going to pull my elbows out to the sides, which is drawing my hands in towards my heart. And then I'll let my arms extend again. So let's think about it's not that my hands are pulling in. It's that my elbows are pulling out. My neck is long, my shoulders are down. I'm feeling that support under my arm. So now I'm gonna start with that pull in, and then I'm gonna open my arms out to the side. And this to me feels like unfurling wings, and then my arms come back together. Now this is a pretty light thing, again, because we're thinking more about how all our parts work together and not just working as hard as we can. You could certainly do this with a heavier band if you wanted to and have it be a little bit more about strengthening. When I am opening my arms, I'm thinking about keeping my shoulder blades really broad on my back. So when my arms are out to the side, I don't want to be pulled back into retraction. I want to feel my shoulder blades staying pretty still. They might retract just a little bit as my arms get to their widest point, but they are not initiating the movement. As I'm opening my arms, I'm still reaching wide through my elbows and then really reaching wide for, through my arms, trying to get them all the way to the walls. Your elbows don't need to straighten all the way. Keeping them a little bit soft is fine. So you're in more of like a port de bras position. I think that's right. I don't know. I'm not actually a ballet dancer. I'm going to do a couple more here. And again, keep it out of the neck. So if you're feeling it up in that spot, think about the shoulders relaxing down your back. So now we're gonna take the arms in more of a up to the side and overhead motion. For this, you can either keep your hands in the same orientation with your thumb out, or you can bring it all the way to your wrists because there is gonna to have to be a little bit of negotiation with the band turning around your, or your arm turning inside of the loop. So I'm gonna start with my hands in front of me and I'm gonna press them down by my sides. When my hands are all the way down, I want to think about that same rolling in the shoulder that we were just doing. So my chest is open, my upper arm is by my side, but I didn't pop my ribs out. Reaching through my fingertips, I'm going to let my arms start lifting, and as I do that, my palms turn to face forward. They go up as high as they get and go, maintaining my rib position without it going into my neck. And then I let my arms come forward again and they have to turn back just a little bit so that they can press down to the sides. So there is just that little bit of weird turning that has to happen in the loop as your arms move. We're really trying to be connected into the back of the body here. So especially when my arms are by my sides and sweeping up and out, I'm feeling my whole back line from my heels all the way up into the back of my arms, all through my middle back, everything's working. Let's do two more. And then we're going to release those.